Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Luke's. As we continue our observance of Advent, and today we hear again about John the Baptist. At communion, of course, all are welcome. We offer pita and individual cups of wine or grape juice, or you may choose to bring forward your communion pack for a blessing. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds as we listen to the prelude. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord Jesus, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In the spirit of keeping vigil as we await the birth of Christ, this third week invites us to embrace imaginative wonderment at the things of God. We praise you, O God, for the Advent wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's Advent. As we light three candles on the wreath, Strengthen our hearts as we wait the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God. You have done great things for us, and we rejoice in you. Send us with the good news of your love to all who are sad or lonely. Amen. The majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong and do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. God will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. And the lame shall leap like deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackal, jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Word of God, word of life.
A reading from James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer awaits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient, strengthening your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you see and hear. Those who are blind receive their sight. Those who are lame walk. Those with leprosy are cleansed. Those who are deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist, Yet the least in the dominion of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated. Abandon all hope, all you who enter here. It is a mythical sign for all who enter the realm of Hades or hell but I think it ought to be written over the entrance to the division of motor vehicles on Elston. <laughs> and there are those who think that it would be a fitting sign to put over a baby's crib after she has entered this world. And sometimes it really makes you stop and think when we contemplate the kind of world into which we are bringing our children. Barry McGuire had a song in the, 90, the 60s called The Eve of Destruction. And the fact of the matter is that our children are born into a world in which all will die and in which sometimes things seem helpless. Those beautiful, hopeful words of Isaiah from last week and this week, almost describing a new Garden of Eden, the... the Child shall play with the viper and the lion with the lamb and this beautiful highway now coming to us to rescue us seems like a cruel mockery. 
in a world of pandemic and war in Ukraine and Ethiopia and children dying in our own city, the child shall play with the snake. I was on a confirmation retreat and I was in the eighth grade. I heard screaming and ran to where my classmates were drawn back in fear and panic. In the midst of them was a large snake on the ground. Well, your pastor decided to impress the girls. <laughs> and so drawing myself up to my full stature of 80 pounds, I walked up to the snake, smiled my best adolescent macho smile, and picked the thing up. And of course, the viper in an instant bit the child, buried his fangs in my hand, and caused me to run away screaming and shrieking in fear, abandon all hope. And yet, hope is in the world. Why else would Isaiah share such a poetic and peaceful vision? The Garden of Eden restored when Israel was on the eve of destruction from Babylon. And in the wilderness, here comes John the Baptist. The wilderness, a desolate, hopeless place, wearing the first designer clothes for prophets, camel hair and leather, eating vegan health food, locusts and wild honey. And this character is bug-eyed with the vision he sees of sin and death, and he's in conflict with the religious leaders, and he preaches a message which loosely translates goes something like this, unless you clean up your act, you've had it. And yet, in his urgency, there's hope. As he lays his eyes on the root of Jesse, Jesus of Nazareth, and in the wilderness between John and Jesus is carried out the drama we still live today, hope amidst despair, salvation on the eve of of destruction. And then in our gospel for today, John finds himself on the eve of his own destruction. His prophetic truth-telling to power has gotten him in jail, awaiting execution. Can you catch the disappointment in his questions? Is Jesus really the one? Have I been believing in someone who's disappointing me? And yet, the good news of the presence of Jesus as the Messiah comes to him. Tell John what you see. That God is with us, especially when we're poor, deaf, blind, when we need to hear good news. It's all around you, John. I am all around you. The Messiah is here. This can be a disappointing time of the year for folks. Maybe even some of us will have our bad days in the midst of a season of anticipation and joy. Losses are amplified. Our faith can be tested. And yet, our gospel for today and our lesson, our beautiful lessons from Isaiah tell us that in the midst of the wilderness, God is there. I saw an obituary for Bridget Gurney in the back pages of the New York Times. Bridget Gurney spent five hours trapped under a crane. It was a freak thing, as is so much of what happens to a human life. Bridget Gurney didn't deserve to be hit by a berserk crane. God wasn't punishing her for anything. God didn't cause the confluence of greed in the building industry and an unlicensed crane operator and the wrong people in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like so much of the random evil in a fallen world, it just happened. Yet as Bridget Gurney lay pinned between life and death, underneath a hulking crane, she was not alone. The day was filled with bulletins. Reporters hovered, crowds gathered, TV shows were interrupted, the flow of Manhattan traffic snarled and seethed. But a path was made to Bridget Gurney for her rescue. As Isaiah said, a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way, but it shall be for God's people, 
No traveler shall go astray. No lion there nor any ravenous beast come up on it, but the redeemed shall walk there. The rescue itself was a team effort. The result of the coordination of many special skills. People had prepared well for this moment and they saved Bridget's life. The heavy machine operators did their part skillfully and oh so carefully to extricate her. The paramedics on the scene sized up the situation and saved her life by giving her blood transfusions. Medicine kept her alive, alert, and lucid. Ambulance, police, fire, hospital, doctors all added their contribution to the saving of Bridget Gurney. Tell John what you see. The combined effort to say, no, we will not give up Bridget Gurney to random evil. We may live in a world of berserk cranes, but we will not give in to them, not this time. I found all of this, as millions did, gripping and moving. Yet to my mind, the most compelling drama happened in the waiting, in the small space where Bridget Gurney waited, in that excruciating time when it was not at all certain she would come out alive. The thing that touched me so deeply is that this wounded child of God did not wait alone. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by the disciples and said, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? And they said, go and tell John what you see and hear. There was an emergency medical services man in the waiting space with Bridget Gurney. And because of the waiting of that one man, Joe Raganese, powerless to pull her out, yet willing to be powerless and remain with her, because of that one ordinary Joe, Bridget Gurney never forgot that she was in the hands of God. Both Joe and Bridget prepared well for their moment in mutual ministry. They were baptized and raised as Christians. Both knew the liturgy. Both had been nourished at the Lord's table. Both understood the biblical dimensions of sin and grace, of confession and absolution, of baptism and Eucharist, of life and death. And those dimensions of Christian hope found their deepest expression not in the gilded St. Patrick's Cathedral around the corner, but in the grit and dirt of a Manhattan street suspended between life and death under tons of metal. In that small space, we saw the flowering of faith and ministry. As James said, be patient therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Bridget held on to Joe's hand. Don't leave me, she said. I'm right here, he replied. She then prepared for a Christian death. Her courage about this was ministry to Joe, a reminder that the comforter, the servant, is often the most comforted and served. Basically, Joe became her priest, and she gave him her confession. She gave him her final thoughts to share with her children. She unburdened her soul to the gentle policeman holding her hand. Then, having squared her earthly accounts, she was ready for the comfort and grace of God, something most vivid to her in the Eucharist. Get a priest, came the word on the street, and so a priest was summoned, then left again to get bread, the host, the body of Christ. The priest returned, but there was no way that the priest could fit into the small space in which Bridget Gurney awaited the presence of God. Just as there is no way that priests can be everywhere with everyone in every crane-shattered corner of existence. But Joe was there, a member of the priesthood of all believers which we share, already holding her hand, risking the safety, bringing comfort and God's presence. And here, good people, I beg you to pay attention. For Joe is you and me, and Joe is St. Luke's. 
each of you present in the world in places of hurt and hope and life and death, each of you in your own way priests, living reminders of the nearness and love of God. As Isaiah said, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong and do not fear. Here is your God. He will come to save you. If we don't say it in our lives and our presence, how will it be heard? So Joe took the sacramental elements of the Eucharist and together they made an act of contrition. Together they fed on the only hope in our crane-shattered existence, the body and blood of Christ for you. Amen. The body and blood of Christ for you. Amen. And that as much as anything that happened on that day, that Eucharistic moment was a miracle. Transforming the suffering street, the space of a tragic accident into holy ground, incarnation, the touching of divine love and hope with human chaos and despair. Tell them, tell John what you see. We, you, are the answer to John's question. When you show up, Jesus shows up. Tell John what you see, cards and baskets for refugee children, eating on Sunday nights and sharing a meal with those who are hungry and homeless. Being a part of the body of Christ in this world, which is present in refugee camps in Sudan, which is present in disasters, which is present even as we see it in the Good Gifts catalog. All that ministry that we are a part of are signs that Jesus is in the world, especially where we are disappointed, where we hurt, where we grieve. Member care, teaching children love and compassion, gathering to pray for this wounded world and to celebrate the Messiah Jesus in song. Tell John what they see. Tell the world what we see, what we do. This is what Joe talked about on the TV shows the next day, about the peace of Bridget Gurney, the touching grace which gave her courage to put her remaining hours, however many, into God's hands. This past Wednesday, I was in a place where my dear brother John was often in his ministry. I was at a hospice with a 99-year-old member of St. Luke in Belmont. He had been a principal of their academy at one time. I could tell as he was talking that he had John's question. Have I been following the right one? And then he said, I know I have. I just need some strength. And then he told me about his life and his ministry and his family. And then just like Bridget Gurney and Joe and just like you and I today, bread and wine, together, can the body of Christ for you, can the blood of Christ for you. And oh, that beautiful highway opened up. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way, and it shall be for God's people, and the redeemed shall walk there. Amen.
confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. We pray for the church in our country and around the world, its ministry and the mission of the gospel. For the well-being of creation, for peace and justice in the world, the nations and our communities for the poor, the oppressed, any who suffer in bo body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Carol Becker, Janet Bowman, Paula Garcia, Suzanne George, Sally Hansen, Irene Jinks, Jim Owis, Todd Sheck, Ken Choi, Peggy Sheffield, and all who we name in our hearts. For St. Luke's and for the special concerns of our community. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, especially all who we name in our hearts. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all.
Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. We have to help your her heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places. Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, in a day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Amen. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. Make your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift on peace of earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate. Power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray.
Be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you. You are invited to come forward to receive the bread and then a cup. Hearing the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. You're also invited to come forward for a blessing yourself or a blessing of your communion pack. And you may be seated.
Let us stand and pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A few announcements. First, be sure to stop by the Good Gives Fair in Spangler uh, this morning after we worship or next week before and after worship. The funds received through the Good Gifts go directly to ELCA World Hunger. Next Sunday is Commitment Sunday for our Give from the Heart Stewardship Emphasis. You should have received the mailing this week. Though we didn't in Chicago. I hope you receive your mailing. Uh, if not, I'm sure you'll have it in the mailbox going to your Tuesday. The mailing will contain a letter, uh, a commitment card for 2023, an envelope to return your card, and a year-end gift envelope if you're able to do so. There's also additional stewardship envelopes uh, in the atrium. Also next Sunday, and Kim, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong on this, uh, the Sunday church school will be here during the educational hour singing Advent and Christmas hymns. And whether you're a parent or a grandparent or child-free, you're welcome to come uh, at 8.30 and, and sing with the kids. Spirit Matters uh, gathers again on December 18th. It will be hybrid. As part of our observance of this season, we will again offer a longest night service on Wednesday, December 21st. For those who feel lost in the shadows at this time of year. Again, I point you to the community happenings and all that information. There's information there about the Christmas card tree in the atrium, uh, how to save money and postage by putting a card on the tree. And also the flower chart is available in the office for 2023. Receive the blessing. God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.
Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks, Jesus.